on the Korean Peninsula, there's a huge language barrier. There's extremes of temperature. Was there anything about your Korean experience that uh, you feel free to talk about that I, I can imagine that the, just the sound of battle is just tremendous. Well, it's hard to say how, how, what happened. When, when you got aboard land, they, they, they told you what you what you was doing, what they wanted. We want to take that hill, or we want to do this, and we want to do that. And you you just did the stuff as they, they told you, and and you, you you your your nerves and your your self control and stuff was there, and it was. Boot camp and uh, growing up as a Marine did that to you. You, you, you. you become one person. You felt prepared? Yeah. That's, I think that's extraordinary. I mean, I'm, well, you, you had to be prepared or somebody's going to knock the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't even chuckle about it. I mean, that's, and, and how long in the, in the actual Korean Peninsula or thereabouts did you spend? Tough to remember things that happened so long yeah. ago. I guess I guess I was there per, in, in Korea, pretty near, maybe from eight to thirteen months. Well, and during that time, of course, it's not like it wasn't all fighting. I mean, you know, uh, we were there on, on guard duty and and to keep things. Keep things moving. Yeah, moving. I would imagine, you know, most Americans now we're used to 24-7 news cycles and having information at our fingertips. But yeah. then it was difficult to know what was going to happen even in the next day or so. And was, was it true that many in the military were aware that there was a million-man army of the Chinese um, back in the North Koreans, and, and it must have been a very difficult time to wonder what was going to happen tomorrow, let alone tonight. Well, the thing is, I, I think the, the, the thing that I don't ever remember speaking about the number, that we knew that China had a hell of an army. So, the only thing for us to do was what? Is to kill them. And we did it. We did it. And, they, and, and they did, we didn't care how we did it. And that's hard to say. Well, that's, and I guess the relief, is, is there a way you can talk about it as a member of the military when the armistice, or not, not an armistice, but when finally it, the, the heat of battle drew to a close, North Korea is not that far from Seoul. It's only, yeah. what, 30 miles? Mm -hmm. But it's, it must have been a huge relief to you guys and a constant threat of yeah, war. Yeah, it, uh, it was re re uh, we, we could relax. We didn't have to always worry about what are they doing. You know, who, who, who is that? And, right. and it's difficult, I mean, North Koreans look like South Koreans. Yeah, very much so. I think we need to learn from people like you, and I'm wondering if, as you reflect on that military experience, if there was a lesson that you'd like to relay to the average American about war or just the contentious relations we face with others. There's men like you have saved us from many wars, and, and we can't thank you enough for it. Maybe there's a lesson we ought to learn from all of this. I, I, I don't, don't know how. Well, yeah, let's, let's go back and talk about, we, 
we just got over the Second World War. Right. How, how, how did they learn? Because almost, we're, we're almost, we're all Frenchmen, we're all Germans and, and stuff. The only, only new, only people that is really different to are Jewish. And here, here they were all mixed up too. And how, how did they get through it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> It just seems, you know, it's a it's a long way, isn't it, yes, from yes. the suburbs of Philadelphia yes, to yes. the Korean Peninsula. Yes. I'm, I would imagine that there's some lifelong friends that ended up as a result of these experiences. Sure, there was, but um, the, as far as, as as communications, after I got home, there was no, there was no no communications from anybody from any Korean person. Over there. Okay. Where, when you get off the ship and you land, when when you came back from Korea, where did where did you, uh, where did you get off? Would it have been in California? In California. Uh -huh. Were the were the troops greeted uh, in an appropriate manner in those days, as opposed to some of the outrages during the Vietnam War? Yeah, we we got. Uh, they usually had, had praise for us and stuff and dances and you know uh, dinners and stuff. But uh, well, it wasn't uh, too great. I mean, it was tough. Those are tough yeah, times. Yeah. And and then you found uh, uh, one of your life's past was with Hercules Incorporated, and. Uh, you made your way to the Allegheny Highlands, and as as you indicated, you were a superintendent at that at that company. No, uh, let me let me uh, go back here. Okay. Uh, I I come home on leave, and I was going with my wife. When I was in the service, we were in school together, graduated from school together, and everything. And uh, I said, I don't don't know what I'm going to going to do when I get out of the service. And she says, I know what you're going to do. She says, You will come work for her, please. She she says they ask me about you all the time. She, she, she must have talked about me and everything. And when, when, when I got discharged, I, the head of the uh, personnel called me and asked me to come in and re review. So I went and reviewed. I had to do job the next day. Wow. That's... I didn't, didn't know, know the, all I knew they were a chemical company. And it's just like DuPont, they had, they make a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Oh, it's a tremendous company. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I just start, started out and just learned and talked and learned and talked and learned and talked. And pretty soon I was, I was working chef work and then, then I went on and everything. And, and, a couple of years, I was making good money and everything, and I had had a responsibility of uh, there was uh, 32 two men underneath me, and I kept them making stuff that I was supposed to make and packing it up and getting it ready to ship back. That's all I was good at. <laughs>